Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about BGT amplifiers. This is our example number five. In this example I will combine the discussion of the previous four examples of the BGT amplifiers together and we have now the complete common emitter amplifier with a four resistor biasing. And we will see that we get now a practical circuit, close to the practical circuit we can use as an amplifier. And this is again an MPN amplifier, MPN uh, BGT. And it's called AC coupled amplifier and also the common emitter amplifier. And we will see again that we have a large gain. Of course, we will work out the calculation step by step and also verify these in our SPICE simulations. So this is the circuit. We have here at the moment uh, this re uh, low resistor in addition to the example number 4. And we see also the 4 resistor again, R1, R2, RC and RE. So the values are shown here and the load is 10 kilo ohms. We see again a VCC which is 15 ohms, 15 volts I mean, and a VBE is 0.5 volt which is this voltage drop. The question is again, the calculate the voltage gain which is VO over VI if the beta is 100 and we repeat the process for 200 and 300. We assume again, that is the assumption we always make for this circuit that we have a linear region of operation for the BGT. And it is the collector current is then equal to the base current times this beta, which is then base current times the beta will be then the collector current. Okay, let's look at the solutions for this voltage gain expression. We start with a DC analysis, and for DC analysis, we assume that all capacitors are perfectly open, and that we have then this is disconnected. So our microphone, let's say, is disconnected, and our speaker is also gone. So we have actually this circuit. So everything is now in DC quantities. So you see capital letters. Now we need to calculate the required base current, the collector current, and etc. So we first transform this to a Teflon equivalent circuit. This configuration, and that will give us the Teflon voltage and Teflon resistance. So Teflon resistance is the parallel combination of the R1 and R2 looking back from the base. That is this expression. And the value will be when you substitute these two values, 8 kilo ohms. Teflon voltage is the voltage division at node B. So we do R2 over R1 plus R2 times VCC and you will get 3 volts. This is the important step. And then we will use this X circuit for our DC analysis. Then we make at this part a Kirchhoff voltage law loop at the input. So we will set up the V Tefanen is equal to R Tefanen times IB plus the VBE plus the emitter current times the emitter resistance. But we know the emitter resistance is given by beta plus 1 times IB. And we combine this, this in here, the IE, you will have this expression. If you now combine the coefficients for the base current together, you have this expression. Now you have an expression for base current given in terms of the rest of the parameters. And this is an important equation which we can use for later questions for B and C when the base, when the beta is changing. Okay, let's now bring these, uh, informa this information together here and then move on with beta is 100. And substitute in here what we have and that will give us 25.9 micrograms for the base current. Now using the linear region of operation formula we have a collector current here which is then this and emitter current is this because emitter current is always the summation of the base current and the collector current. You can also see it from here. So we have now the DC quantities for the currents. We now start with the Kirchhoff's voltage law at the output loop in order to get the VCE looking at this circuit. So we have the VCC, which is this voltage, is equal to the RC times IC plus the VCE plus the RE times IE. So just looking at this part of the circuit. And if I now uh, rewrite this such that I have the VCE, I, I can now substitute everything and we'll get 7.73 volts. So we have now every DC quantity to continue. Now the AC analysis. AC analysis for that, we need to have the small signal module. We know that the capacitor here CE will short this out and also this capacitor here will be shorted. So that was then RC here and RE will be then effectively parallel. Why? Because the VCC is also grounded, which is then AC ground. So effectively from the collector node, you see an RC and RL in parallel. That's actually shown here. In the base, you have from the base node going R to the ground, but also there is an R1 to going to ground, which is the AC ground there. So we also have R1 and R2 in parallel. 
And then you have a short here, which is then the RS, and that goes to the VI. That's all shown here. And what you see in the red box is the actual model of this BGT. So the R pi is a dynamic resistor. We will determine that shortly. And this is the dependent current source, which will then depend on this current IB and also the beta. Okay. Let's bring this together. And we have also our DC base current. And this is the ZIB looking in here. And this is ZI looking in here. Those are the two parameters we will use later. So ZIB is just actually R pi in this case. So R pi is then given by this formula, which is the thermal voltage over the base current, which is DC. And if you want to do the calculation, you get 1004 ohms. So this ZIB is just 1004 ohms. ZI is actually the parallel combination of this part and the R pi. So that means in effect, three resistors in parallel. So that's also given by this. And if you now substitute everything in here, you will get ZI of 892 ohms. So close to 900 ohms. Okay. So the voltage gain V over VI is given by this expression. What it can be also written is VB over VI and then VO over VB as a multiplication. So we divide the problem in two. But VB over VI is just voltage division. So that is then ZI over RS plus ZI. That's just uh, some attenuation factor. And the VB is then given by this expression because the voltage at this node is also this current times the R pi. That's shown here. But we know that V O is minus beta times IB, which is this current, times the parallel combination of RC and RL. Because if you want to know the voltage here, that will be the measure from this node to ground, but the current will be flowing here, that will is then in the reverse direction. That's why we have this minus and the beta times IB is just this IC. Now taking these two together, and we have now a V over VB expression, so we see IB and IB here, we can divide it out, we have this expression. Now we take this and this and then substitute in the voltage gain expression for AV. So we have this. Let's calculate everything, uh, to put everything in here. And RC parallel to RL is close to 1667 ohms. So if you now calculate, uh, substitute everything in here, R pi, ZI, etc., and the betas, you will have now a value of minus 106. So you see that we have a large gain. And actually, it is a little bit lower than the situation in question uh, in example number four. Why? Because then we didn't have this RL. So that's the parallel combination effect of that load resistor. Okay. Now moving on and looking at the simulation result for the DC analysis, you see the values here for the DC analysis, and so also the simulation result for the beta S100. You see they are really close to what we have calculated. Small errors due to more parameters in our BGT. Moving to the simulation result in the transient response, we see this is the voltage gain. The blue is the input and the red is the output. You see this inverted, so that's the minus sign. You see the input is 10 millivolts peak, so 20 millivolts peak peak. It's 10 kilohertz. So if I look at it, the output peak peak output voltage will be then 2.085. If you now calculate the actual gain here from these two plots, you will get minus 104. Very close to minus 106, but we have calculated. So this is from the simulation. This is from the calculation. Okay, we start now exact same procedure, but then for the beta is 200, so I go a little bit faster. So exact same thing, beta is 200. Again, using the base current, you calculate everything using the beta is 200 in this case, also for the emitter. And also output a loop here to get the VCE. That is 7.36. And then AC analysis, again, same circuit. So it is not really changing, only the values will be changing because the R pi will change. You get again these two impedances, and you have a R pi. R pi will be this, so a thermal voltage over the IB. IB is changing, so it means the uh, R pi will be changing. So it is 1908. Then you get again the parallel combination of this and that. That will give this, and you will have now an expression, and that will give us 1541. So it is now increased, almost doubled, the ZI. Now we have, a, have again a voltage gain expression, which will then divide in two problems. So again, the voltage division here from the base to the VI. And you have this expression for the VB and also for the VO. Now taking this together and also collect them together here, we have then the, the ac actual expression for the voltage gain. Now we use again the new values for R pi, new values for ZI and also the beta. So the 
RC pattern on RL is still 1667, that doesn't change. We have this, now the new value will be then minus 132. So it has increased because the beta has increased and also you see the effect of beta. So it is not really unaffected, it is affected, but the increase in beta was 100%, but the effect, the change in the gain is not 100%, it is smaller. Okay, let's look at the DC analysis for this beta is 200, you see the values here, you see also the values we have calculated, so this is calculated, this is simulated, so they are also very close, so this, you see for example the base current is 30.8, we have 30.6, so very close to what we have calculated. Going to the transient response, we see that we have calculated this for our uh, gain. The blue line is the input and the dark red line is here the output, which is inverted again. The input is again 10 millivolts peak, so 10 kilohertz as the frequency. The peak peak is 20 millivolts. The peak peak value from this plot, looking at the minimum and the maximum, we see this 2.571 volts. If you now just calculate this out, you will get minus 129 as the gain. Voltage gain, and it was calculated to minus 132. So very close to what we actually see. What you also see is there's is a little bit of sort of an offset in this transistor that is not level to zero here. It is level to approximately minus 27.5 millivolts. So that is the effect of actual modeling of this BGD. Now, again, the same business. Now for the final one, which is the beta is 300. Now again, go a little bit faster, IB. I see, so it only changes just the beta. So now the new values for the collector, the base and the emitter current and also the VC. You see again, the VC is not really changing. And also the base, I mean the collector and the emitter current is also not really changing, although the beta has changed enormously. AC analysis again using this small signal model. Again, the RPI and the beta will change here in this circuit. So we have again the, the two, these two impedances. We see this is again the IB is R pi. R pi is again a new value because the base current, DC base current has changed. So it is again increased. So you see 2,813 ohms. So we move on again, the parallel combination here of the three resistors and now the value of the ZI is now 2,081 ohms, almost 2.1 kilo ohms. Okay, moving on to the actual expression of the voltage gain, divide the problem in two. So Again, I go a little bit faster. We have discussed this in great detail already. So now we get the expression for the voltage gain, which is then again using this parallel combination of RC and RL, new value for the beta, new value for the R pi, and also new value for our ZI. And it will give us minus 130, minus 143. You see again, the gain has increased, but it is not, the increase not that much as the increase from 200 to 300. Okay. Looking at DC analysis, for this case, you see the DC analysis, so the value of 9.36 approximately, and also very close to what we have calculated. For example, also the collector current 2.81, here approximately we have 2.77 milliamps, so also very close to what we have calculated. Looking at the transfer response, we have minus 143 as the gain. The blue line is again our input, and the red line is our output, again inverted. The input is again the same expression, 10, uh, 10 millivolts peak and 10 kilohertz. Peak, peak 20 millivolts. And we see from the plot, the minimum and the maximum, we can see what the peak, peak value must be, which is then 2.787 volts. Now, when you calculate this out like this, you get minus 139 as the gain, which is very close to what we have calculated. So this is calculated the blue one, and this is calculated what we have, or determined from the simulation. All right, now let's now summarize the calculations. These are the result for each beta, 100, 200, 300. These are the base currents. You see the base currents are changing enormously, but the collector current is staying quite constant. It's not really changing that much. Also the emitter current and also the collector emitter voltage. This is important for bi-stable design. You see the voltage gains also are changing, but not that much as the change in the beta. So if, the, for example, the beta was going from 100 to 120, this might change only from 1 minus 106 to maybe 110, depending on, of course, the operating region. But this change is 100%, so, and this change is maybe just 30%. So it is not that much as the change in the beta. Looking at the DC results, again, this for beta is 100. 
200 and 300. You see also the base current is still changing and also the collector currents are changing not that much. Also taking this summary as a transit response together, these are the plots for each beta, 100, 200 and 300. The actual gain was here minus 104, here it was minus 129 and here it was minus 139. So it is close to what we have calculated and also simulation results confirm that. So it is not that much a difference. If you have any questions about this example or any other example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.